By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today it is Tuesday, so that means more action for you from the uh, Farmstead Cup in Mirlo. This is the third video from the Farmstead Cup, the third match. And um, we're going to look at a match between Mirte and Ruben. And it's quite interesting because both of these players are playing with exactly the same colors, white, blue, and red. And both of them are kind of using red as a direct damage package. But there's also some interesting differences between these decks. Mirte is playing more like line dip, a little bit more aggressive. And Ruben is going a little bit more uncontrolled with Sarah Angels and Air Elementals. So, you know, before I, you know, dive into the specifics of these decks, before I do the deck decks, I would just like to point out that we also have a description with every video where you can find the rule set of this tournament. And there, for example, you can find out that this tournament is core set only Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised. Those are the core sets that um, that players can uh, can choose cards from to make their decks off. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thing to know. So if you want to know more about the tournament, the rules, the setup and all that, check the description below. And in the description below, you can also find timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, you go directly to the games. You can skip the intro. You can skip the deck deck. You can skip it all and go straight to the action. So if you want to do that, check out the description below. And here we are going to continue with the deck decks, and I think I'm gonna start with the deck of Myrta. Let's take a look at her aggro, blue, white, and red deck. And here we see the blue, white, and red deck by Myrta. So it's basically your line dip deck, right? We see four Savannah lines and four Surrender Perfrites. And this deck, it's built pretty aggressive. I know that Myrta usually plays counter burn, and I'm seeing kind of that counter burn fire in this deck as well, right? Myrta wants to or cast Savannah line turn one, or cast a black vice turn one. So her business is dealing damage from the get go, right? And then just trying to get that surrender per free out as early as possible. So remember, this tournament is core set only, but the unique thing about it is they've included revised into their list of core sets. So you have alpha, beta, unlimited, and revised that you can choose from. So that means that surrender per free is now a possibility. So I'm not surprised that I see decks like this at this tournament. I would be surprised if I wouldn't see any surrenders with with those rules, right? That would be surprising. And uh, we're seeing a lot of direct damage in this deck as well, by the way. So we're seeing four lightning bolts, but we're also seeing four, I mean, that's pretty, that's a lot, four psionic blasts. And I think against his matchup uh, against Ruben, those psionic blasts can be really, really good. First off, you can always play them on the face to the dome, you know? You can kind of use your direct damage to finish off your opponent quite quickly. But also, uh, Psionic Blast is ideal to use against the Sarah Angels and Air Elementals that Ruben is playing with. So I think it's going to be tough for Ruben. Maybe Merit is simply going to be too fast and too quick. Obviously, you know, Ruben's playing more control. He's got a lot of answers, but this is, this is very feisty. The deck looks very, very lean. So yeah, interesting. And then, of course, from the sideboard, they can both probably bring in Red Elemental Blast and COP Reds and stuff. So... It's going to be a really interesting match. Like, it's not a mirror match, but they are playing with the same colors. And, you know, as you can see, Myrta clearly is going kind of for that aggro route. And now let's take a look uh, at the deck of the opponent of Myrta, Ruben. And he's going more for like a mid-range kind of controlish mix. So let's take a look at the deck of Ruben. And here we see the deck of Ruben. So as you can see, it's exact same colors. It's white, it's blue, it's red, but you can also instantly see the different choices. Now, first off, we've got all the power. Now, this is a beautiful deck, right? It's almost completely black bordered. Um, it's got the blue power in there. It's got the Moxon in there. It's got the Lotus in there. So this is like a heavy, heavy deck. And I guess in a way that kind of explains it. You could say in a way that Myrta is playing a little bit more budget because she doesn't have, for example, a Black Lotus. So she cannot accelerate as quickly. So she's simply choosing to go with creatures and spells that cost less. And I guess in the deck of Ruben, it's kind of easier to, you know, to play with bigger creatures like Sarah Angel and Air Elemental because, you know, he's got all the Mox in his deck. He's got the Black Lotus in his deck. So he kind of can accelerate quicker and can put those cards on the battlefield quicker. Now we also see two Jam Day Tomes. So that kind of signals, always signals control, control to me when I see Gem Day Tomes. So Gem Day Tome, four to cast for an artifact, right? Four and tap to draw a card. 
And the interesting thing is, I think in any other meta in Magic the Gathering, you would look at this card, you would say, man, that is so bad. But in old school, it is so good because it's card advantage. So as long as you have control, and this is what, for example, the deck wants to do, right? As long as you've got control, you can use a GM Day Tome and you can start slowly start picking up more and more cards than, than your opponent. And that is going to give you the victory long term, right? And that is definitely something that can happen in this matchup as well. Now, there may be one thing that you're wondering about is why is Mirta and Ruben, Ruben both only playing with one control magic. Now, the reason for that is that in this rule set, control magic is restricted. So you're only allowed to play with one control magic. So that is why both players only have one control magic in their decks, right? So when I'm looking at this deck, and I think maybe Ruben can win this because he's got access to power. And um, I believe Myrta doesn't have access to power. Let me just check. Yeah, there's no power in her deck. So her deck is powerless and Ruben is playing with power, right? So that can, of course, make a huge difference. I mean, casting a time walk can be, can be a game-winning move. Ancestral Recall, just sick, right? One blue, instant speed, draw three cards. That's insane, you know? I kind of call them cheat codes. I play with them too, they're fantastic to play with, but they are kind of like cheat codes because they get you ahead in the game or they can get you from a dead position into a winning position just by using one of those cards. Uh, it can make a huge, huge difference. I was kind of hoping that maybe Myrta would play with Fork because that's really cool. If you don't play with power, but you do play with Fork, you can fork the power, you know, uh, and you can fork a counterspell by countering the counterspell, which is also a fun thing to do. But I mean, that's not the case in this in this matchup. Um, when I'm looking at the deck of, of Ruben, I can say he's put in the power, he's put in the Gemday Tomes, and what he's kind of taken out is some of the aggressive components that you could build into a deck like this, right? So he's really chosen to go more mid-range control instead of Mert, who's going more aggro, but it makes sense with the cards that she has, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really interesting because, for example, that Time Twister that he's playing main, Time Twister can be a great card for him as well, but also maybe even better for Myrta because she's playing with Vices, right? So uh, it's got to be tricky. I think if, if Myrta is on the play, she's definitely got a chance, but she's got to be on the play, right? I think... If Ruben's on the play, I think he's really got the upper hand here. Let me know in the comments below who you think is going to win this one. Is it going to be Myrta or is it going to be Ruben? It's really aggro versus mid-range power, right? That's really what we're kind of looking at because they're both playing with the same colors. Anyway, really, really interesting. Looking forward to the match. So why don't we just go there? Let's go to the action and let's see how this is going to turn out. Let's go to game one. Game number one, here we go. We've got Myrta sitting on the right and we've got the Ruben sitting on the left. Let's see, it looks like Myrta is on the play. That's good for her. There's that black vice. And he's going to drop to 17 straight away. And this is a great start. But now look at this. Ruben's going to empty his hand, right? There's the Lotus. He's actually not playing anything. That's interesting. Maybe he's keeping a counter spell on hand. There's the Lions. And there is a quick bolt on the Lions. And a pass turn here. Next turn, I believe she can play a Surrendip and drawing a card for turn here. So now, does he have a Sarah Angel? With the Lotus, he could play Sarah Angel, but he's really going into that control shell, right? He doesn't want to go too aggro. And there's a pass. Ooh, Myrta is missing a land. That is probably going to be deadly. Missing that land drop, she really needs to find a land here. At least there's a Lion. She's probably going to play that out. And let's see, yeah, there's a quick bolt by Ruben and a pass. There's an island. So he's got tons of mana. Probably cannot find an air elemental or a Sarah Angel to play. And now Myrta needs a blue source. Doesn't have a blue source to play out that Surrender Pafrit. Uh, drawing a Psionic Blast. Very unfortunate here. And just a pass turn. Ruben also not doing much at the moment. Finding a land, but it's not of the right color. There's a Mox Ruby. Probably going to see that on the board. Ruben still on four cards. Doesn't take any damage. He has all the time in the world, it seems. There is another Vice. You know, if Myrta can maybe later in the game get, get a Wheel of Fortune and get it to resolve, that does mean six damage probably for Ruben. There is a Soul Ring. All these cards are not helpful. What she needs is a Blue Source. Can she now cast, ooh, Sarah Angel. I'm expecting counter spell here. Or does he also have, okay, there's a Psionic Blast. Yeah, so or counter spell or Psionic Blast or swords. <laughs> there's just so many ways in these decks to get rid of creatures. It's probably one of the reasons uh, why they uh, these colors are so popular. 
And then you also, of course, you know, have your lightning bolts as well because you're playing with red. There we see a jam day tome, and it's really important for Mir to to get rid of this jam day tome. If this disenchant, okay, there's a bolt first, so she's trying to lure out that uh, counter spell. There's another bolt. I think this is really smart because now you're kind of forcing Ruben, kind of tempting him to play out that counter spell, and she's taking a turn. Doesn't she have? I thought she had a disenchant in hand. I mean, look at the Dubin. He's already on eight. I mean, there is some pressure for him. And now there we see a Volcanic Island. She's got a Psionic Blast. First playing a Serena Pefrit. Is he going to counter this? That is the question. I mean, either way, this is good news for Mirta. If he's not countering it, fine. Then deal with it next turn. And if he is countering it, then also fine. He lost a Counterspell. There we see a Sarah Angel. And I think if I was... Mirta, I would I would attack on the I would go on the life total. There we see a disenchant possibly for that gem day tome. I think what I would do, but it's easy for my position, is disenchant gem day tome. See if Ruben wants to protect it with a counter spell. If he does, then you cast your psionic blast on the life total. Instead, there's the psionic blast. Is it on an angel? Ooh, there's a counter spell. Yeah, there's the counter spell. That is unfortunate. Now I would play the disenchant. Yeah, disenchant on the book. So I think I would have done it the other way around, but I'm not sure if that's the right decision. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this play. It's really tough. I mean, GM did tell me you want to get rid of that as well. There's the attack with the Sarah, and this is one of the reasons why Sarah Angel is so good. Ruben doesn't have... Ooh, there's a time walk. Ruben doesn't have to tap that Sarah Angel, and so he can attack with it and use it as a blocker at the same time. It's kind of sick. Attacking again. Mirta going to go down to eight. Another Sarah Angel... And this is looking bad now for Myrta. I mean, she was so close, but now she seems to be very far away. Ruben's on eight, but that power really, uh, really gave an extra swing. She's seven now because of the surrender, of course. So close, so close, but I think she's not going to make it. Looking at her hand, I believe there's at least one land in there. I believe she just drew into a tundra. So that's not really going to help her. What can she do? Looking at it again. Tapping. Okay, there's a side blast on one of the Sarah Angels. So she's going to drop to five. And there's another Serenip. I kind of like this because now she can double block if Ruben attacks. The question is, what is she going to do after that? Because I'm not expecting an attack here. There's Ancestral Recall. Going to draw three. This is quite an interesting game here. And second, the Lotus. Playing an Air Elemental. Even more pressure now. Passing turn. This is bad news. Sarah Angel. Oh, I'm sorry, Lightning Bolt. That's it. That's it. Oh, man. I was kind of rooting for you, Mirti. You were so close. So, so close. Uh, but this this promises to be an interesting match. You really enjoyed this game one. Now both players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. And it looks like Mirti already has her opener. Is Ruben taking a mulligan? At least Mirta is on the play, which makes her deck better. I mean, we saw in game one how close she was, and you could also see the impact of power, right? I mean, we all know the power cards are good, but it's really interesting to see people playing similar colors, and one player has access to the power. You can see the time walk, and that Ancestral Recall did, you know, amazing work for Ruben in the game one. So let's see what game two is going to bring us. First off, we do see that red elemental blast in hand of the Ruben, so that comes in from the sideboard, and he did take a mulligan, so he's gonna go down to six. And there is a Savannah Lines turn one by Mirta. Let's see if we see a quick bolt. There is a Mox Pearl. And okay, playing a Tundra. There goes there the Mox and Sapphire and Pearl. Beautiful black board at once. And I wonder, okay, there we see a balance. Yeah, this is wow. He already took a mulligan. This is so. This is so dirty, man. I know, I know, Ruben. It's a very good play. I would do the same, but it's just... Oh, man. It is dirty. So, 
There we see Savannah Lines gone and only three, well, four cards now for Mirta playing that basic uh, mountain there. Does have a Control Magic and Sarah Angel in hand. Cannot find another land, it seems. There is an island and, okay, Surrender Perfreed. That's pretty good. Will we see a counter spell here from Ruben or maybe he's got some other creature removal in hand? We do see a Psy Blast there. Control Magic <laughs> taking it from Mirta. Now she needs Disenchant. I, I do believe she also has a Control Magic in her hand, by the way. So, okay, there's a Psy Blast on it. And that is what Control Magic can do, you know. It can be a two for one. And that's exactly what has happened here. And they're tapping five. There is the Air Elemental. I believe Myrta also has a Control Magic. So if she can find land number four, she can actually steal it. Okay, this is also good. A Red Elemental Blast taking care of the Air Elemental. There is the Tundra. And tapping five, another air elemental. And there is a counter spell on the side of Myrta. So Myrta's doing really, really well, only having, you know, those three lands available. Now there's land number four passing turn. And are we gonna see, no, I do believe there's a Sarah Angel in hand or not. Maybe I'm mistaken. There is a Savannah Alliance. What I like about Savannah Alliance is, oh, it's a Swords of Plowshares actually. What I like about Savannah Alliance, it's this problem you can drop on the board. It's only one white. And you can say, you know what, do you want to spend creature removal on my lion? You don't want to, but you don't want to take damage. And that's kind of the position that Ruben is in right now. I do see a Brain Geyser in hand there. He's kind of in the tank here. I think I would just play, well, Mirta has that mana open as well. You don't want to run into a counter spell, but I think he's taking the risk. You're going to play the Brain Geyser, it seems. Yeah, Brain Geyser for four here. Wow, and that is huge. This can kind of change the whole game. There is a Plateau. Unfortunately for Ruben, he couldn't find a second blue source there in his hand because that would have been ideal for him. And I'm kind of expecting an attack. Okay, there's the Swords. So Mirt is going to go back up to 20. Four cards in hand. And there's a Brain Geyser from her side as well. Good timing, I think, because now Ruben is tapped out except for that Plateau. So it's kind of safe to play the Brain Geyser. Unfortunately, only for two. Because Mirta has been kind of low on lands this turn. I mean, this uh, the second game. There is a Jam Day Tome. Again, that control game. And he's got a lot of lands. Look at all the lands. And just at the end step of Mirta, he can go, you know what? Draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. And before you know it, he'll have tons of card advantage. There we see a Sarah Angel expecting a counter spell here or some other type of creature removal, maybe a Psionic Blast. If he has a Psionic Blast, he can actually choose exactly to first draw a card, play a Psionic in his own main, or in the turn of Merit if he wants to, it's an instant. No rush there. I'm kind of expecting him to just pass turn here. Okay, tapping. Okay, playing Side Blast now makes sense as well since Merit is tapped out, by the way, so then Merit cannot counter. So I guess that's a logical move by Ruben. Let's see what Merit can do. It is an interesting game again. There is a Soul Ring. And it's all about timing, isn't it? Like now you've got the soul ring, you're like, what if I would have waited with the brain geyser? But then again, you know, he probably would have countered the brain geyser with all his mana open. The problem here is for Mirta, the longer this board state remains, the better it is for Ruben, because Ruben is drawing twice as many cards because of the Jam Day Tome. And that's why the Jam Day Tome is such a good card in these kind of mid-range control builds. There we see another Jam Day Tome. I mean... If I have a counter spell, I would definitely counter this. Or maybe you can also think, you know what, I'm not going to win the card advantage game, whatever. I'm just going to let you draw what you want. It is going to cost him eight mana a turn. So she's going to allow it. I wonder if this is a bluff or if she really has a counter spell in hand. And Mirta is a very experienced player, so she kind of knows how to play the bluff game. Drawing a card, unfortunately for her, it doesn't seem to be very valuable. And this, I mean, Ruben... It, He's, he's walking away with the game right now. He's drawing so many cards. He's going to find he's gonna find beefy creatures. He's going to cast them. Exactly. There's the first one, Air Elemental. I'm sure there will be many more. And he's still got, I believe, enough. Yeah, he's got enough land still after casting Air Elemental to activate his Jam Day Tome twice. So he can still draw three cards. There's a Control Magic. Are we going to see? Okay, there's a Red Elemental Blast. There is a Counter Spell. And there is a Counter Spell. And there, oh, <laughs> love it. Oh, this is so cool. 
This is top magic here. Oh, it's fantastic. And so Mirdis has managed to kind of steal the air elemental and also Ruben didn't have enough mana anymore to activate both GMD tomes. So it's like a win-win here for Myrte. But still, I mean, she's still in a corner. You know, it's still going to be tough for her. There is a Chaos Orb, which is great for Ruben in this scenario because he can flip it on the control magic to try to get control back over his own air elemental. He's first going to get another card. Why not? Look at all the mana he has. It's insane. It's insane. And I mean, if you've got tons of mana and you've got two books, it's, it, you can just draw forever. You know, it's fantastic. And now he's going to flip. And okay, I guess that's a hit. So he's got the air elemental back. But at, he's not even tapped out completely. I want to say at least he's tapped out, but he's not. He's got the Black Lotus. He's got the two duels. He's got the Volcanic, which is, of course, also a duel. Anyway, he can still counter. Doesn't seem to have any counter magic or just doesn't care. Going to take the life your swords on the air elemental. And he's now on 24. And another problem for Mirti, because she's supposed to be the aggressor. We saw that really, really well in, um, in game... Uh, in game number one, where she was able to get Ruben down to eight. Uh, but now Ruben's on 22, you know, and he's the, he's more of the control player. So his deck benefits from going long. He doesn't mind. There he scoops up another Sarah Angel. Of course, he is staring at the Chaos Orb. And I really think that, you know, Mirt has made the decision, you know, I'm not going to win the card drawing game. So I'm just going to try to use my cards to kind of control the board and, you know, maybe try to get a creature in and get some damage in. Maybe a line, maybe kind of use my psionic blast and my, my lightning bolts to kind of, you know, perhaps steal this game. And she is going to activate it now. Interesting. On one of the tomes. Okay, wow. So I just gave a whole speech about how, let's, let's look at this flip. And here we go for the flip. I put it in slow-mo. She's a little bit doubting. You're holding it up pretty high up, Mirta. Okay, wow. This is exciting. Okay, come on. Let's hit it. They're discussing it a little bit, like how many times it has to rotate and all that stuff. So let's see. And there, wham, it's a hit. Nice. Well done. And it's so funny. I was just giving this whole speech about, you know, she's not caring about the GMD tomes anymore. And there she activates that orb and, and flips on it. That was a really good flip. That's a full hit. Nice altitude as well. And playing a volcanic island. And it looks like she's passing turn again. And just for the people that don't know, I always, um, w when I make these videos, it goes twice the speed. So that's why maybe sometimes you see a funny hand gesture or something that looks funny. But just, that's just because it's twice the speed. There we see a Sarah Angel by Ruben entering here at the battlefield. And another, yeah, of course, another Sarah. So he's now going on full cylinders now that the Chaos Orb's gone. And he's probably just going to go in for eight. And this is going to be really tough. Also because Myrta already played out her control magic. We do see a Savannah lines there. Is that is that a fireball? I'm not sure if that's a fireball. If it is, she doesn't have enough mana to kill both Sarah Angels with it. And it is pretty risky, of course. If Ruben has a counter spell. On the other hand, you just have to go for it, right? Or else you're dead anyway. And that's exactly what she thinks. There's a fireball on one of the two Sarah Angels. Of course, he's going to draw a card first to see if he can find a counter spell there. And no, nope, it's gone. Okay, so at least one Sarah Angel's gone. She's going to play the Savannah Alliance and pass turn. Wow, and this is just quite an interesting match again. An interesting game, I should say, but the whole match has been interesting. And I'm hoping, actually, that Myrta can somehow steal this game away from Ruben. I, I don't see how, but it would just be great because I want to see a third game. There's the attack. Myrta going to go to 16. There's the time walk. We saw that in game one as well. So he can hit double. And uh, he can just draw the card. And there is Soul Ring. And first he's going to draw another card before going in his combat phase. Playing an island. Going to attack. Myrta going to drop to 12. And pass turn here. Yeah, the time walk really kind of accelerates, right? Because now he can end draw, draw an extra card with the Tome. And just because he takes an extra turn. And he can hit for four again. There is a Swords. I'm really expecting a Counterspell here. Oh, no Counterspell. 
Maybe he's kind of run out of counter spells. I didn't really keep track of how many counter spells he already played, but this is quite interesting. And actually, Mert is able to deal some damage. That's pretty cool. So Dubin is going to drop to 24 here. And let's see. Gonna find an extra card. Beautiful plateau and pass turn. And Mirt is like, okay, I can attack, I guess. Let's do it. Let's go for it. So 22. I'm a little bit surprised, but the Dubin has already lost a ton of creatures as well. You know, um, Mirt's deck is really good at dealing with creature threats, but of course, Dubin's deck is as well. There we see a bolt. Bolt, 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 bolt. Going to go down to four. And uh, I'm now expecting a Psionic Blast. There's a Psionic Blast. Is she going to counter? Does she have a counter spell? Does she? Oh, she does not. She did have the power sink, but look at all the lands on the side of Ruben. And that's it. Ah, oh, being killed by direct damage. It kind of feels bad. I mean, Ruben, you've, you've won this one fair and square. Don't get me wrong, but... I mean, I don't think you can blame me for trying to be on the side of the underpowered deck in this matchup. And, you know, Mirti, you were so close. And, uh, but yeah, in the end of the day, Ruben, you take the victory. You brought a beautiful deck to the table, man. So many blackboarded good stuff. I'm kind of jealous. But thank you, uh, Ruben and Mirti, for playing here on Timmy Talks and playing on the channel. Uh, and also thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, please remember to subscribe and ring that bell. And another thing that you can do is you can also, also leave a comment and of course like this video. All that helps the channel grow. Now we also have a uh, Patreon program so you can become a patron of Timmy Talks. And it's really nice. Uh, it already starts with $1 a month and by be becoming a patron, you're supporting the channel also financially. So you're really helping me to keep doing what I'm doing and of course there are also some perks when you become a patron of Timmy Talks you get access to our Timmy Talks Discord um, I um, organize special events and tournaments for the patrons so you can play in those as well and last but not least your name will be in the end scroll at the end of every video I show an end scroll with the names of all my channel members and patrons and I'm super thankful to them so you know what let's just go to that end scroll and take a look at our fantastic wunderbar channel members and patrons. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.